are, are you are you making any inroads in the United States? And I'm curious your thoughts on some of this legislation that's coming out of the United States to restrict internet uh, ability. Right, I'm very concerned about that. I mean, back there are. The thing is here that what what the internet has changed, and I'm going philosophical for 30 seconds here, mm -hmm. is that it's given everybody a voice. And just like when the Catholic Church tried to attack the printing press in the Middle Ages, they they did that up to and including the death penalty for unauthorized copying. Mm -hmm. There's the, there's been this privileged elite in society that that has held the privilege of interpreting truth and telling people what the truth is. Mm -hmm. That privilege has been broken by the internet, so very, very strong economic interests are now trying to curtail the net and prevent if essentially losing this privilege. So I'm very concerned when you see like American po politicians talking about instituting censorship. That's frankly not the America I grew up with. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about the Stop All on Piracy Act, I'm talking about the Protect IP Act, and all, all of this. I mean. America, for me, has always had freedom of speech as its flagship, and all of a sudden I'm seeing how the net is is threatening economic interests, and all of a sudden these liberties weren't worth the, the ink they were printed on. Hmm. And and um, are there movements like the, the uh, SOPA in the United States, are there movements like that going on in Europe? There have been attempts in the uh, European Parliament to put similar things. And I got, I've got to say, I'm quite proud that our presence in the European Parliament stopped exactly that happening in Europe. There, really? there, there was something called a telecoms package, which um, would enable people to be cut off from the Internet. Right. And our specific presence in the European Parliament made sure that that didn't happen. The pirate, the pirate party's presence. Yes, it's remarkable. And and. Um, are they are those interests funded by the by the big entertainment corporations? Yes, they are. It's the copyright lobby which has lost a very lucrative distribution monopoly, seeing that it doesn't cost anything to distribute uh, distribute the vi digital information anymore. Mm -hmm. So essentially, uh, since it doesn't cost anything in a functioning market, you can't charge for it. But since these uh, large corporations have a monopoly on distribution, they're trying to. Uh, clamp down on the liberties that enable us to distribute digital information at no cost because it threatens their entire business model. But my point is that if civil liberties are at odds with your business model, it's your business model that has to change. Yeah. No, no entrepreneur on the planet has the right to say that I can't sustain my, sustain my business in the face of sustained civil liberties. Yeah, yeah, very, very well said. Rick Falk, Falk Vick? Say it, please. Falkvinge. It uh, means wing of a falcon in Swedish. You can oh, see oh the that's marvelous. Falkvinge. The founder and political evangelist for the Pirate Party of Sweden. We'll be back in just a moment with a little bit more. Stick around. I should probably have that camera over here, but it's too bad. Jacob, uh, feel free in my ear to point out to me when I've got the wrong camera on or anything. Just talk talk to me if you if you can. Welcome back, Tom Hartman here with you, and uh, another Swedish band as a bumper. Uh, <laughs> Jacob is, is so good at, at picking out our music. Rick, the Wing of the Falcon, Falkvinge. That's it. Is is our guest here? He's the political evangelist with the Pirate Party in in Sweden, and uh, one of the other, you know, in, um, in America. In America, in America, when people think of Sweden, they, they uh, number one, uh, you guys nationalized your banks back in the 90s because your banks crashed the way ours did. Right. And uh, you just said, okay, that's it. Screw the bankers. Threw them out. They lost all their money. Uh, the country nationalized them, and then they slowly sold them back into the private marketplace at a profit, I guess. And, you know, why haven't we learned from that? I'm curious about your thoughts on right, that. Right. Right. Iceland, I mean, Iceland did, did the same thing. They allow the banks to fail. I mean, if if you're investing money and the government, essentially the taxpayers, guarantee that you're not taking any risk, there's no incentive whatsoever to not go out and take all the risks you can. Right. Because so so, so the banks in Sweden now are in a position where if they make insane loans, 
like the privatized banks did in Iceland, like the private banks in the United States did and in the UK, if if they play games, they're actually going to have to pay the price, the circumstances? Right. I mean, it's there was this huge crisis in the 90s, like you say, banks essentially went belly up and, and the government didn't bail them out, but they bought the, the national. They, they bought the foreclosure essentially. Yeah, yeah. So uh, after that, like you say, it's been gradually reprivatized. It's been gradually getting back into the game. But I think everybody remembers that if you're taking risks, you got to know what you're playing with. Yeah, yeah. Now the the other thing that when um, Americans think of Sweden, other than you know strong social safety net, uh, democratic so democratic socialist society. Uh, is Julian Assange is this whole kerfuffle around WikiLeaks and right. Julian Assange and whatnot? And I realized that um, you can't talk much about that, but I'd like you to explain why. Sure, uh, absolutely, that. absolutely. I mean, Julian Assange was in uh, in Sweden this this last fall, and and uh, he's been, he's got a bit known known for that. But what's mm -hmm. also he was also here to sign a deal with the Pirate Party, which was widely publicized, where we uh, offered him server space pro bono oh, to, run, uh, to run WikiLeaks and protect it. And what we got out of that was that if, uh, if anybody would attack WikiLeaks, they'd have to attack the Pir Pirate Party first and get a subpoena against us, and that would be really yummy in an election campaign trying to, now, trying to attack the contender party. In but I can't speculate yeah. on the legal case against Julian Assange personally, especially not in media. And the reason for that is I was so close to these events that happened that if it goes to trial, I'm going to be a key defense witness. So therefore, I can't speculate on the merits of the case yeah. in the media because it would burn my testimony. Yeah. Well, I'm not, I'm, I'm not asking you to. I am, I am curious, though. And when we were in Iceland, we spoke with a member of parliament whose Twitter account was hacked by the U.S. State Department. Right. And, and uh, uh, worldwide famous now, the, the, the situation. And she has introduced into the uh, Icelandic legislature a 10-step program that basically uh, guarantees Internet privacy and keeps the government out, not just the government of Iceland, but any government if it's the .is uh, domain. And um, she thinks that can hold. Is there, you know, how is that... And that, and much of that is coming out of what happened with Assange and WikiLeaks. I mean, that was that was kind of the the, the match that lit the kindle, even though the the their kindling, even though for some time the, the kindling was accumulating uh, in the form of the internet and, and information. How how is that situation in Sweden? Well, you know, this is pirate policy. It's privacy, accountability, transparency, and civil liberties. So I'm I'm talking about so your party here, right? So the problem. As is everywhere else, the, is that politicians aren't necessarily mis malicious, but they don't understand information policy. Mm -hmm. And it's worse than that. They get their emails printed for them by a secretary, and they think that they therefore understand what the net is about. Mm -hmm. But people who live their lives online have a completely different perception, of course. And if you got a 60-year-old legislator and make them understand that the law they're making would be the equivalent of putting microphones under every cafe table when they were young. They would be absolutely horrified out of their minds. But they don't realize that. They're thinking it's just some sort of way to curtail uh, share the Ill illegal sharing of music online. It's much, mm -hmm. much more than that. So how do we get them to realize that? <sighs> well, when I founded the Power Party, I, I realized that you can't really ask somebody to take three weeks off of that, that job and just understand a new perspective. you got to make it personal for them. And at the end of the day, what politicians care about is getting reelected. Mm -hmm. So after three years, we had to stop talking to the politicians and bypass them, talk directly to the voters, challenge the politicians on election day, and that changed the narrative. That's interesting. And so the narrative the narrative here in Sweden has changed. The, the, the people in Sweden it has, absolutely. Now, we didn't get in, uh, in the last national election, like I say. We, uh, that's kind of a complex, uh, comp complex election, so we need more. Mm -hmm. We need a broader platform. We're getting there. Mm -hmm. But we did get into the European elections, and that changed the story entirely. Mm. That's, yeah, and, and uh, you're a member of the... You have two seats in the European Parliament. We do. What... In, in Two out of Sweden in, in the 30 or 40 seconds we have left. Um, what kind of power does that give you? What what how, what's the value? 
Well, we did prevent the entertainment industry's attempt to shut people off the net without a trial. Mm -hmm. That's not going to happen. They they attempted to shut people off by the tens of thousands without trial. That didn't happen because wow. because of us. We have gotten the Green Group, which is the third largest group in the European Parliament, I believe, third or fourth, to adopt our policies right off the blueprint. That's great. So That's we've great. gone from. Is there a Green Party? Is there a pirate party in the United States of any consequence? There are. In some states, they, they are forming. I mean, it's uphill because of the uh, political system in the United States, but they're forming. Yeah, remarkable. Okay, we're, we're oops, I'm sorry, wrong camera. Uh, uh, Rick Falke, Falkevinga, yeah. uh, the pol political evangelist and uh, founder and, and political evangelist for the Pirate Party of Sweden and of the European Parliament. Um, uh, Thank you, Tom. I really enjoyed being on the show. Pleasure having you with us, Rick. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. We'll be right back from Sweden. Let's pick up your calls and, and get back into American politics here for a little bit on the Tom Harbin program. 866-987-THA. Okay. Thank Thanks. you, Rick. Brilliant. Thank you, Tom. I really Good enjoyed job. it. Good job. Good job. Did anything I couldn't done better that or no, that you I didn't that was it was great. It's just uh, I, I the one the one thing I noticed mm -hmm. is that we need to make sure everybody oh, is I, uh, the same distance to the mic. Yeah. Okay. So I'm leaning so back and forth. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. I'm just going to move it back for this person. Okay. Fair enough. But thank you. I mean, well, well, everything else was great. And, and in fact, uh, Jacob in in uh, Washington D.C. I'm sure was just riding the volume control, so it didn't. Okay. Cool. It came out. It came out just fine. Yeah, and their contact is brilliant. Thank you. Are you going to stay in Stockholm for long? No, we're leaving tomorrow morning. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, actually, the day after tomorrow morning. I have to speak at a conference here tomorrow morning. Okay. okay. Is it okay if I also take pictures? Oh, sure. Yeah, you can do anything you Where want. Where in the States are you based? Okay. D.C. D.C. So, uh, oh, I'm sorry about that. Oh, I was in D.C. for the uh, for an award gala recently when I was awarded. Oh, uh, we, you know, we do, it, we do a, a TV show there in addition to this radio show. Oh, really? So the next okay. time you come, we'll have to Yeah, you you're on. every day. Well, Could I have a picture of you, too? Of course, of course. Is there a bit of a break? Certainly, you want to sit down? Because yeah. if I stand up, I'm going to pull wires. <laughs> I know, but yeah. I want to know if you want to move your mic. That that that's how I it's can't. Set. I I'm afraid no? to touch anything okay. with all these wires. Because you turn your head and left is too too wide. Okay, so yeah. I'm gonna lean slightly over towards Tom. Okay. Ah, jag får tuppa. Du skulle ha tagit när de pratade. Då då såg de mer naturliga ut. Oh, no, no, it's fine. It doesn't, it doesn't bother me at all. No, it's okay. Yeah. okay. You're good? I'm, I'm, not, 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 easily easily I'm, not, I'm not easily distracted. The, the, the biggest yeah, problem is just that these microphones are very sensitive, so any noise yeah. in here goes out over the They're about 20 centimeters from the outside. They are fairly directional, yeah. Yeah, but I'm, I'm still, even here, I'm hearing myself in the microphone. Yeah, because you don't seem to bother it, but I know you will go away. Directional is good. Ah, okay. A bit. Okay, a bit. Yeah. <laughs> in the U.S., we use these dynamic microphones where you literally have to be within four inches of them within a four-inch circle or it just hears nothing. Okay. And the whole room is, si you know, you could have a circus going on in the room and people would hear nothing. Just you. Just the gap. And, and, and that comes a lot. Uh, yeah, they do, actually. We can actually a couple hundred talk dollars. softly around Tom and... Yeah, I've got, I've got four people around me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, not easy to just Yeah. I think so. <laughs> okay. So, how much time do you have? You don't uh, have we have a, we have a six-minute break at the bottom of the hour. Tired of your dentures, or do you know you need dentures?